well, yeah, this is what I look like. It's nice to finally, formally, fully introduce myself. And it's kind of nerve wracking, but also don't think that I'm doing this because I feel like I'm obligated to because this is something I've planned for a really long time and something I plan to do once I hit 100,000 subscribers anyway so yeah this is done by my own free will and I'm really excited to be able to do this because there's so many different content that I want to try that I wouldn't be able to do unless um, I showed my face, I guess, to make things more interesting. I've always wanted to try and do more vlog style content and now I feel like it's the right time to do it. My dream came true recently and that dream felt so far away and impossible. Before today, I hit 100,000 subscribers, which is insane. I know everyone says that, oh, it's insane that I hit 100,000 subscribers, but this is something that I would daydream about when I was a kid watching Markiplier and PewDiePie thinking, oh, it'd be nice if I got to do that, but what are the odds that I actually do get to do that, you know? And I <laughs> somehow actually did it during a time that I least expected because my channel really started taking off well I was in university for something completely unrelated having completely abandoned my dreams of art and getting big on YouTube it, it's a story for another day but I had basically completely given up on ever being able to pursue that and now thanks to you guys it's actually my main job right now like thanks to YouTube I'm actually able to support myself and even support my family which is something I've always wanted to do and it's incredible that I get to do that with art you know doing the things that I love and have always wanted to do so please know that this is very big for me and very important to me because it shows it shows a little bit that dreams can come true and that it happens when you least expect it. So because dreams are coming true all over the place, another thing that I've always wanted to do that is also one of my dreams is to actually visit every coffee shop in my city. So in case you guys don't know, I live in a city called Bandung, which is the capital of West Java. And it is known as kind of the coffee shop hub of the entire island. Like there are more coffee shops in my city alone than there are throughout the entire rest of the island. So obviously, I gotta try all of them because I have a deep love and passion for coffee shops. I've always been able to tell if something is a coffee shop and so I'm just naturally drawn to coffee shops, I guess. I love being there, I love ordering good food and I just like soaking in the ambiance and pretending like I'm working even though obviously I'm not. I'm just scrolling on YouTube and TikTok and getting a little bit of work done, just, just a little bit. So it's a great place to pass the time and it's obviously, I would consider it a hobby of mine to frequent coffee shops. So this is kind of that first step taken to an extreme because for this video to celebrate 100,000 subscribers, I thought what better way than to actually go to a coffee shop or better yet, 10 coffee shops in one day, which is a bit absurd. And to think I initially planned to do like, oh, I'd actually like to visit a hundred coffee shops. Obviously not in a day, but I was talked out of it by my sister who is actually joining me for this endeavor. So <laughs> I think I, I had a lot of fun. It was really tough when I was doing it. And I really enjoyed being able to just drive around and go to a bunch of different coffee shops. But 
I would personally not recommend doing 10 in a day because you don't really get to like soak in the vibe and like try out the menu as much as you probably should have but yeah for this video I'm sticking strictly to locally owned coffee shops so locally owned businesses to, so that we can support local businesses because Bandung is also known as like the creative hub of Indonesia like it's canon I was about to say canon like the comic book it's actually recognized in the country that the biggest export from my city is creativity so there's a lot of really cool coffee shops with a lot of cool concepts and you guys are gonna enjoy it I think and it's also maybe like a good guide for you guys if you're ever traveling to Bandung as niche as it is I don't know if anyone ever goes to Indonesia to go to Bandung they usually just go to Bali maybe Jakarta and that's about it so maybe you know consider coming to bandung and and checking out our um obscene amount of coffee shops i promise they're all awesome most of them <laughs> so yeah let's let's dive right into it so to prepare for this endeavor i actually created a list which is just someone else's list that was published on compass tv the website which is also a TV channel, but they also have a website. And they compiled like 15 of the most trendiest Instagrammable coffee shops in Bandung, which coincidentally are coffee shops that I've never been to. So obviously, I would like to try them. And so I wrote it down in my little book. And this list actually changed a lot. Well, not a lot, but like quite considerably during the course of the trip I initially planned to go to um, certain locations that because of time constraints and just general sanity reasons um, we decided not to go because there were other shops that were closer uh, that seemed just as interesting that weren't on the list and there is actually one that I kind of cheated on because it is my current favorite coffee shop location in Bandung that was literally like down the road from the coffee shop we were visiting. So we kind of went to a place I've already been to there, but it's still a really cool place that I think you guys would enjoy a lot. So yeah, the first place we went to is called DU Cafe. DU Cafe. DU coffee shop and this is just like a cozy little kind of like mostly outdoor spot where the coffee shop is in an encapsulated little box and that was where you placed your order and your sit down space is mostly outdoors and they had this cute little full length mirror that of course my sister and I had to do a cute little outfit of the day on I'm wearing an outfit closely resembling my persona that you guys might be familiar with if you watch my channel a lot <laughs> so yeah we got to sit down and it was pretty it definitely screamed like university student they use coffee grounds for the ashtray it's pretty cool and uh, yeah, well, you wouldn't be surprised there were a lot of university students working there, like, you know, doing group projects and stuff. And I think it's a really cool, like, just hangout spot. It, was, it wasn't my favorite place just because there were other places that were just much cooler that kind of stuck with me a lot more. And that place just has this kind of industrial vibe that I'm not the biggest fan of. It's still really cool. For this cafe, I ordered the Biscoff, which is basically this biscuit milk concoction that is very good uh, it, the biscuit tasted a little bit like cinnamon and the milk was very creamy and you might notice that even though I'm visiting coffee shops all of today I am limiting myself on my coffee intake just because I'm driving and I don't want to get the jitters while I'm driving just for safety precautions, most of the drinks we ordered 
were non-caffeinated. But you know, that's the thing with coffee shops is that they don't just sell coffee, especially not in Bandung. It's kind of like a little, it's like a little bistro restaurant where you also have really good food. And you know, it's I think it's only fair that we get to explore the whole coffee shop experience. But yeah, my sister ordered the ice lemon tea. I think it was actually the raspberry iced tea, but I forgot. Hold that thought. I should get my receipts. Ugh, your girl has receipts. So I don't know if I actually kept the receipt from that first one, which is a shame, but you'll see in the video anyway, what she ordered, but she said it was really good. So that's great. <laughs> I love how you still drank out of the glass. I was, it was acting as a spoon, so I saw it as a spoon. I forgot I could drink through it. Interesting. I wish we could have stayed at every location a lot longer, but because we had a time constraint, and you know, traffic in Bandung is pretty unpredictable, so we had to. Skedaddle pretty quick out of there, but it was fun. Oh, also, just a bit of a tip in case you are frequenting Indonesia and would like to try out like coffee shops and stuff, bring cash. And it's not for the coffee shops because in Indonesia, we have a certain culture around parking. Basically what happens is there are a lot of people who will help control traffic and also help you park. Um, the police don't do that for some reason, so a lot of people, uh, communities have taken to actually kind of self-regulating that. I don't know why the police aren't doing that, because it's, it's part of their job, you know, but... Uh. But yeah, so these people, these are usually volunteers. Sometimes they are hired by the restaurants that you are eating at and are paid a salary. But sometimes there are just these scallywags that show up and bright orange fluorescent vests acting like they work there and they don't even help you park they just show up as you're about to leave and demand money and where does the money go do they deposit it to the cafe that you parked at does it go to the business that you are using the space for parking of or do they just pocket it and then escape into the night never to be seen again you don't know, but for your own safety, it's better if you carry cash to give them money because otherwise they will give you very dirty looks and make you feel like a very bad person. And they don't ask for much, honestly, especially if you're coming from like a foreign currency, it's really not a lot of money. It's just, it's a matter of etiquette, I guess. And I always struggle with this, not because I'm a cheapskate and that I don't want to give them money. It's because I just don't carry cash. This is a big problem for me and I think a lot of people my age is that we a lot of us don't carry cash anymore we just pay everything through our phones through our cards so we are often found in a cashless state which can be pretty inconvenient if you are visiting 10 coffee shops in a day all of which has these parking guys so just a tip in case you're planning on doing whatever it is I'm doing today the next coffee shop we went to was Two Cents Coffee Shop. Two Cents is in Jalan Lombok and when you are perusing down the street, I would highly recommend that you drive slowly because the entrance is very easy to miss. Two Cent is kind of like nestled away behind a bunch of different buildings and so it's like you have to come through an alleyway and they do have parking space but when I got there, it was incredibly full. I was surprised because a lot of these coffee shops were really full when I went there. It, granted, it was also a Saturday and a lot of Jakardans, which are people who live in Jakarta, always choose to spend their weekends in Bandung and cause traffic everywhere. So yeah, I didn't get space in their parking spot, but I did get space by the side of the road. And that's also another thing on why our parking culture is so unique because literally anything goes. And that's why you should tip your parking guy because they probably know the best and safest 
parking spots for you because you don't want to accidentally park somewhere you're not supposed to and have something happen. So yes, I got the parking space at two cents. I was a bit apprehensive because it was um, to get to the coffee shop, you need to go down this alleyway. But as soon as I stepped into the alleyway, I realized, oh my god, this place is awesome. Like, so past this alleyway, you have this big open space that has a lot of like outdoor sit down space. Indonesians really like smoking and vaping. So a lot of these coffee shops will have outdoor space reserved for smokers so there's always going to be a, a smoking and a non-smoking area and then when you get inside you have this like little rustic cozy building that is like definitely um we would consider like classical architecture left over from like dutch colonization you can tell like the building was very well preserved um they still kept a lot of the same woodwork and the flooring and the windows it was amazing and honestly i think this cafe really left a big impression on me Because we are non-smokers, we chose to sit indoors. We found this little nook under the stairway that we thought was just so cute. Then that's where we decided to sit. All their menu is online, so you need to actually pull out your phone and scan a QR code. And that'll take you to their bespoke website where you also place your orders online. Um, and then you have to go up to the cashier to pay. But for me, my app, the website wasn't working for me. So unfortunately, I still had to go up to the cashier and order manually anyway. Even though when I tried to line up for the cashier, everyone, like the wait staff, were all asking me like, oh, do you have a table number? Do you have a table number? So apparently, you're supposed to sit down first, pick a table, and then you go up to order. Which is the opposite for many of the other cafes. But I really enjoyed being at Two Cents. While we were there, we ordered, well, I ordered the orange honey latte macchiato, and my sister ordered the spicy sausage bruschetta. And they were very good. I swear the orange honey latte macchiato was like one of the best things I've ever had. It's like, you can still taste the coffee, but at the same time, it also tastes so citrusy and sweet from the honey. It's, oh my gosh, it was such a good drink. And the bruschetta was also pretty good. The bread was nice and crunchy, but I personally wasn't a fan of the sausage. I think they could have sprung for a better quality sausage. The salad was good though. But yeah, we probably spent the longest at this cafe just because I think the weight of this journey was starting to take, was starting to dawn on us as we realized Wow, this is actually not going to be as easy as I thought. So we definitely spent some time just contemplating there. And my sister really liked the place. So she was spending a lot of time just taking selfies, which is really nice. Because she doesn't do that often. I liked it. I would definitely go back there. I was actually thinking while I was there, this could be my new favorite spot. And you know what? Maybe if I was in the area again, or if... I don't know, if I just felt like it, I'd definitely come back there just to work, you know? Yeah, I highly recommend this place and I can't wait to go back and try out some more of their menu items. <sighs> Scooch back on. The third cafe we... <sighs> also, if you're hearing really weird gear noises behind me, that's our stabilizer because it has been conveniently placed right in my room. Anyway, the third coffee shop we went to was called Sajiwa. If it'll focus, which it doesn't most of the time. It's locked onto my face, so I guess I have to do this. It's called Sajiwa Coffee. No, it's called, what was it? So, yeah, it is called Sajiwa Coffee. Uh, Sajiwa basically means like one soul, like your souls are linked, which is a very nice sentiment. But yeah, this place was, I 
feel like very trendy industrialist. Like the architecture was very modern contemporary. They had their bar in the middle of the service area. And I thought that was really cool because you could see the baristas working and they had so many coffee machines and they had so many cakes. It was at that point I think I decided that I would start getting footage of all their coffee grinders because I feel like it would give you like a good feel of the vibe of the place. And they also had a Vespa on display, which I was, I'm not sure what the context is, but I think they were it's like supposed to invoke retro which kind of doesn't make sense with the modern contemporary architecture but you know it was a, it was cool it was a vibe we sat down and i had the honey lemon drink which is basically like an orange juice with honey because i i felt kind of nauseated by the thick dairy drinks I was having before and I just needed I just needed a little refresher you know and my sister ordered the brown sugar brulee milk which she told me later on was her favorite thing that she ordered that day so it was apparently really good I hope I've been putting down how much each of these cost just because I need to convert it to USD because that's where most of you guys watching my channel are but yeah it's it's definitely not a lot by foreign standards it's very affordable for you guys but you know for a lot of us in the area it's it's a bit pricey honestly like i would not be able to afford to make videos like this if it weren't for youtube which is exactly why this video is sponsored by skillshare so in honor of achieving dreams and pursuing career paths that you didn't think you could ever pursue. Now is the perfect time for you to hop onto Skillshare if you would like to maybe learn some new skills and do things that you've never tried before but have always wanted to try. Kind of like me. I've always wanted to do more vlog style content and because vlogging requires some skill or at least knowledge of videography and photography, I've been trying to get better at using an actual camera. At the moment, I'm not even sure if my camera is really a DSLR or if it's a digital camera, but I just bought it because it was cute. Okay, so I need to get better at that regard. And Skillshare has a lot of courses on photography and videography to help you guys in your content creation journey, especially if you are someone who wants to vlog or, you know, shoot the scenery and wouldn't you know it skillshare has exactly what i'm looking for i watched this class by pj may plus it was only like 17 minutes long in total so it was a total breeze to go through considering i voluntarily watch four hour long deep dive videos there are some really talented people teaching classes so that you know exactly what they're talking about draw with jazza is on here as well as his editor pj may and there are so many other familiar faces on there that I'm sure you would find a lot of helpful advice from. And one thing I've been meaning to do better at in the new year is kind of increasing my time management and productivity. And so, wouldn't you know it, they also have a playlist for that. I will definitely be checking it out, probably while I'm drawing just to have it on in the background like it's a deep dive YouTube video. Honestly, with Skillshare, you're so free to consume content and educate yourself, improve your skills anytime you want. And right now, Skillshare is offering my lovely Calimaris a one month free trial to try out some of their classes. The first 1000 people to use the link in my description gets one month for free, so join Skillshare today. Thank you so much to Skillshare, and now back to the video. But yeah, this place I feel like was a bit bare bones. We didn't get to see the upstairs space just because that was the smoking area and obviously I would prefer not to inhale secondary smoke and become a secondary smoker. So yeah, but the people were really nice. Like the staff I remember was, was very friendly and they had this one grim reaper decoration that my sister really liked. But that was about it. That was Sejiwa coffee. And honestly, it was doing very well. It was very packed. So it's 
a very new trendy place and if you are into that kind of like trendy feel then that the shop is probably for you so the fourth place on this list is the place that i said that i kind of cheated a little bit just because it's my favorite my absolute favorite coffee shop in all of bandung it's so cool <laughs> and you guys will see why in a second but the reason why i decided to do this coffee shop instead of the one i had planned and written down was because we actually passed by it as we were getting to sejiwa and obviously i was like it's well it, the place is called jardin and it's it's my it's the best it's the coolest place it has such a cool vibe in the daytime and in the nighttime so obviously i'm like no we have to do this and it, it'll also just save us so much time as well so we wouldn't be driving around too much so we decided to go even though i've been there before but it is still locally owned so it still counts okay so jardin is this awesome semi outdoor indoor eating space where it has um three floors so the first floor is actually just reception you have to tell the lady at the desk how many people are eating and then you can go up either by the stairs or an elevator uh to the second and third floors which is the actual service area so the second floor is more of an indoor dining space but my favorite is honestly the third floor because as soon as the elevator doors open it's like you're in this lush forest garden but it's on a rooftop like they have so many large trees and plants in there it's it's incredible and at nighttime it's even more pretty because they have a bunch of these like really pretty lights and they even have like a light show sometimes in there it's so good and you know it looks really good on camera too and honestly i just go to this place for fun most of the time if i feel like it and you know it's it's just really cool it's my favorite place. The parking space can be a little bit tight though because it's it is a very popular spot especially for young people. A lot of the coffee shops are just mostly frequented by university age students honestly. But you can park in the restaurant next door which also has parking space. It just depends and of course you have to pay the parking guy. But yeah, Jardin is my favorite can't go wrong with jardin and honestly the drinks the food everything is always super nice as well i've almost tried everything on the menu except for the breakfast menu because i do not like waking up in the morning especially just to go and eat you know i'd rather eat at home but i don't know maybe i'll try it one day my sister <laughs> chose not to buy anything in jardin because she was getting pretty full i ordered my favorite drink on the menu well one of my two favorites which is the cafe breeze mocktail and it is this like it's a espresso shot with mint and cream so it's like it's very creamy it's very minty and also it's a shot of caffeine uh so that was my second shot of caffeine that day and it doesn't get that crazy but it's very good you can never go wrong with it and i was spending a lot of time just planning the next move i always plan where i'm going to next while waiting for my order and the way i plan it is to just look at which other cafe is closest to the cafe i'm currently in and it's not hard because all the cafes are kind of in close proximity to each other all things considering because there's a cafe in every corner that's just how it is in bandung I have to do But when I went to pay, because obviously I do not carry cash, my sister actually had to withdraw cash to pay for the parking. But don't worry, I paid for all the food and drinks. They only accepted debit for a minimum purchase of one hundred thousand rupiah, which is like equivalent of six U.S. dollars, which isn't a lot. 
obviously for foreign currency, but it's a lot for Bandung standards. So I had to buy extra things to take home. My mom really likes cake and they actually have a really cute in-house patisserie called Cake Me Up. So I decided to buy my mom some black, oh, <laughs> I was holding it backwards. I'm like, why can't I read this? I bought her some black forest cake and an opera cake. And I was told they were very good. So yeah, that was Jardin. Honestly, if you're coming to Bandung and you choose to go to Jardin, you might run into me there because that's just how much I love this cafe. So we are four cafes in and I feel like I'm about to, actually, I already feel like I am. Uh, so I might have to do the other five tomorrow, but also I kind of want to do all of them today, even though I physically can't and my sister has already given up. So this is a, a one woman endeavor at this point. I'm very tired. I'm not tired. I had two cups of coffee, which is way less than I was anticipating, but also I do not want to die of caffeine overdose and I'm driving so I don't want to get fidgety and just like crash the car or whatever you know that'd be a bit lame uh, my skirt is entirely too tight around the waist right now and I feel like I'm gonna throw up bestie <laughs> any thoughts I want to go home uh, we have to do one more just one more and then we can probably go home but also, do I want to go home? I kind of want to go somewhere else, just a little bit, as extra content, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm the one driving us around. So. Fine, but I'm not participating. In what? In the drinking. <laughs> you say that like it's alcoholic. It's not. It might be at this point. It's not. It's just very filling. You know, earlier today, I was thinking, oh, maybe we'll do like seafood, like a big seafood dinner. No. But now it's like, that's kind of unwise. It sounds like an unwise decision, you know. So, we're gonna go to probably the last coffee shop location today and then pick up tomorrow. The fifth cafe we went to was Haloka, which is very clever because when we walked in, the server said Haloka, ka is like an honor honorific. You would use that to refer to like people or older than you or like to customers. But yeah, very clever. <laughs> anyway, the place was a lot, definitely like one of the smaller coffee shops we visited that day if not the smallest and there was kind of no parking space especially for cars it was mostly motorcycles parked in the parking space so we had to park by the side of the street close by luckily it was getting a bit dark so it was kind of iffy to park by the street especially if i was wearing the same outfit which included a short white skirt and <laughs> You do not want to wear any short bottoms in Bandung if you are not white or black. Basically, if you're Asian or Indonesian passing, you do not want to be wearing those kinds of clothes lest you be catcalled. So yeah, Haloka, I was a bit iffy about this place, I'll be honest. It was kind of small, kind of like, it felt very lived in, I would say. It's not really my type of coffee shop but my sister said uh, by the end of the trip that that was like her favorite place so obviously different strokes for different folks and I think you know this coffee grinder that they had with all those stickers on it just kind of encapsulate the kind of place it is it's just like it's a fun place you know it's very indie I would say and they also have this really cute shelf with a drawing gifted to them surrounded by cats which is very cool 
the lighting was kind of dark, but I think it actually it's very cleverly done because it adds to the ambiance. It felt very cozy, I will say. Like I, as soon as I sat down, I immediately just settled in. It was my sister's turn to order this time. She ordered the spaghetti pesto and the Pink Floyd. I didn't order anything because I was dying from carrying us in Jardin. So she did most of the heavy lifting this time. Despite saying in the car just minutes before how she was not going to participate in the challenge anymore. The Pink Floyd. Where do I even start? I'll just let the clip speak for itself. Let's try it. <laughs> It's not even soda, but it feels like it's soda in my soul. It's not bad. It's, yep. it's having a reaction. It jolted me right up when I drank it. You're at a loss for words. It stays. It stays. It stays. Yeah, the Pink Floyd was, it was good. It was just very sour. It had a very sour bomb aftertaste that just, it hits you later on and it like catches you off guard. Cause you, when you sip a drink, it's sour. And you think, yeah, that's about it. But the real, sour like comes later it's it it hits you when you least expect it and it comes in waves it kind of leaves you speechless but i think it's it's a fun experience obviously my sister liked it because that was the drink that made her decide okay we'll do 10. i don't know because like, i have this thing that i made right which is basically this this, this hair tonic that i use after every like, after my showers yeah, out of rosemary. Yeah. So when I drink this, it feels like I'm drinking shampoo. Interesting. Do I like it? I do. It's just I don't like to associate this very nice drink with me in the bathroom. That's an unpleasant image. Exactly. You gotta wait. It feels like a cold shower. You gotta wait for that punch. Yeah. I feel like I can actually do 10 today. Oh, so yes! Yes! Thank you, Pink Floyd. I was very insistent on finishing it in one day because the title would be amazing. But the spaghetti pesto was also really good. The karage chicken they included with the spaghetti was really crunchy and it was seasoned really well. I'm just not a big fan of pesto. I think it's kind of. It doesn't taste like anything, <laughs> but the spaghetti was well cooked, and my sister really enjoyed this place. And if you th if you're really into indie stuff and like just like small cozy places, this is a cafe you should check out for sure. We didn't eat a lot today. We just drank a lot. We did. This is too much. How long does it take for you to eat spaghetti? I think it's a good amount. I don't want too much. That's good. Okay. So to get to the next coffee shop, we had to pass by this one street in Bandung, which is, I guess, hmm, a good way to describe it would be like Halloween Street because every night especially on weekends there are a lot of people like performers that like to come there and they're dressed in costumes which is cool like it's like halloween they dress in like there are people dressed as like captain jack sparrow superheroes and you even get like transformers there but mostly 
it's ghosts. Indonesian ghosts, which are not for the faint of heart, I'll say that much. The makeup is very graphic. So if you are a small child or you are carrying a small child or just don't like horror, I'd suggest kind of <laughs> avoiding that area. And there is context to why people just choose to dress up as ghosts in that area because it is located in kind of like the old town called Asia Africa Road, uh, Braga, which is basically like the old kind of like the old CBD of the Dutch when they were, you know, doing the whole colonization thing. So a lot of people died there. A lot of natives died there, obviously. And if you're wondering why we have a street just called Asia Africa, that was where the first Asian African conference was ever held, which is this kind of non-alignment movement to protect emerging um, countries from basically big superpower countries, which is pretty awesome, you know? Anyway, so I didn't think I would be scared of these performers because I know they're performers. I know that they're all makeup, but I did, uh, I might have made a miscalculation because there's a thing. The performers will approach you. They approach you. Even if you're in a car, they will approach you. And I made the mistake of lowering down my window and giving her a tip, right? And because I gave her a tip, all the other ghouls came rushing into the side of my car and started just scaring me. I don't know if they were particularly looking to also be tipped, but I did not have any more cash on me. So they were just frightening me. Oh, oh it's so dark. <laughs> I hope you got all that. <laughs> and you can't see what's happening. And I, I didn't see what was happening either. I just knew there were a lot of people crowded by the side of my car making terrifying monster noises. And I don't know if it was even the monster noises or the costumes that really got me. I think it was just being swarmed by strangers while you're driving in the middle of the night. And there were other people there. There were a, there was a crowd in that area, but I think I just don't like being approached by a lot of people simultaneously and knowing that they're trying to get at me and tr spook me, startle me. So yeah, that was an experience. Anyway, we survived that. We go to Braga, which is a very well-preserved like historical site. It's been converted to a lot of like art galleries and uh, shops obviously like indie shops there's also bars there and clubs which Bandung government will try very hard to convince you that the city is very like pure but it's not you know but yeah that's the place you want to go if you want to hit the dance floor get a couple drinks right so there are a lot of like coffee shops there luckily for us the nightlife just like a store <laughs> selling phone cases <laughs> electronics <laughs> accessories this is the nightlife. Yeah, this is as far Traffic. as it, this is as far as it goes here. Untrue. That's very not true. Deeply untrue. Deeply untrue. <laughs> How am I gonna park here? There is no parking space in front of said shops though, because it's a very narrow road. It has been the same road since it was built three hundred years ago. Which is a good thing for preservation, but not for parking. So if you want to visit these cafes, there were three cafes there that we visited that made it on the list. You will have to enter the Braga Mall. Driving into a mall. Driving right into a mall. And it's legal. And we're gonna hit all those people. All those, yeah. Population control, baby. We're lying. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bit of a, a fib, if you will. Woo. Which obviously because it is a mall, 
it has parking space. And the great thing with mall parking is that there is a flat rate and you can pay with e-money. So there's no parking guys hassling you. <laughs> but yeah, after you park, we basically just walked to three locations because it was literally just right next to each other. I abruptly exited the elevator. <laughs> My sister got shut in. <laughs> there she The first cafe we went to on Braga was called Sawo, which is a type of fruit that we have here in Indonesia. It's like, um, it's a sweet fruit with the texture of a sweet potato, but it's not a sweet potato. So this place was actually really nice. I think the outside was more interesting to me because it had a tree. I think my thing is just if you have plants, I'll like your place. So it was like modern contemporary once again. We saw quite a lot of cafes with that kind of like modern contemporary industrial vibe. But the inside was a lot more cozy. It was very like clean and streamlined and they had this corner with a teddy bear drinking coffee while i was trying to find the coffee grinder and i think that is precious at that point i was about to drop dead from food overload i didn't know what my stomach could take anymore it started to hit around the fourth cafe while we were in jandin where i was like oh Actually, this might not be as easy as I thought. So, uh, we only ordered the choco chip cookie, which was like a big cookie. It was actually the size of my face. It's warm. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. That's a big cookie. Why did it breathe? <laughs> and my sister ordered the iced peach tea, and they were very nice together. The cookie was very well baked. It was nice and like crunchy on the outside, but gooey on the inside, which is obviously very pleasant. And it wasn't too sweet, which is a great compliment coming from an Asian, trust me. And the peach tea as well had like actual peach slices in it, which I appreciated a lot. It was a nice break from all the creamy drinks we've been having. I think it was also at that point that my sister entered a deep denial. I think I might have broken something in her. So how are you feeling? Huh? <laughs> how are you feeling? My eyes are burning. <laughs> how? I don't know. I feel like that's a you problem. It is. But yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that we've been to seven, six coffee shops now. How many have you been to? Seven? Six. What was the last one then? That was the fifth one. No, it wasn't. Really? <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Come on. It was the seventh one. <laughs> no. This Where's is your list? One. Where's the list? <laughs> it's in my bag. Give me. Okay. Oh, okay. Here is the list. Okay, see, we've been to. Here. One, two, three, four, five. This is the sixth one. Hey, don't do that. You're gonna get your oils all over that page. No! I need to scratch this one up, though. It is, what time is it? It's 7. We're not gonna make it. Yes, we will. Okay, fine. <laughs> You're very easily convinced. <laughs> I just want to get this done. <laughs> so do I. She told me afterwards that she would like to not step in another cafe for at least 3 months. But I had fun, you know. I may have been gaslighting myself the entire time. But I had fun. <laughs> So the next cafe we went to, we actually stumbled upon by accident while trying to find a different cafe that was in the area. It was literally down the street from where Sawa was and across. It was a very nice place called Coffee Braga, which we thought was 
um, this other store called Kopi Toko Jawa, which is like a completely different place actually. But we were, I'm really glad that we ended up stumbling into it because it had the coolest atmosphere I've ever been to. It really like encapsulated that old timey Dutch vibe. And it felt like I stepped right into Hogwarts, but like light academia because the walls were white and i really like that braga is always really full of these really cool historic places and it's so nice to see how they kind of preserve the old and blended it with the new so this place ranked really high up my list i really liked it there even though i was extremely full and <laughs> stepping into the shop I was extremely worried because uh, we had to order something and we could not eat anything else. So we came up to the counter. I asked the lady, what is the lightest meal you have? What is the lightest snack on the menu? And she was like, oh, our popcorn chicken is pretty, it's a pretty nice snack. And I was like, okay, we'll have the barbecue popcorn chicken. And we shared that. Luckily, she pulled through it was not that big a portion which would kind of suck because it's pretty expensive for local standards for not that much food but we were sharing it at that moment i was just grateful that i didn't have to throw up and we could still order something from every shop so we took the win and went about our day but i didn't leave before grabbing this nice photo op opportunity uh, at this photo spot that they had set up. And it's crazy because it wasn't even on the list, but it was like so aesthetic. I highly recommend. So the next place we went to was the actual cafe that we were looking for, which was Kopi Toko Jawa, which basically means coffee Java store. I'm tired. Anyway, <laughs> that place was definitely unique and it was definitely the smallest cafe out of all of them because they did not have a sit down space. You basically came out to the counter and you place your order, but they did serve you very quickly. Like I ordered their special, which was a, an iced lemon sorbet tea. It was new. So we ordered that and by the time I sat down, at the waiting area because they didn't have a sit down space but they did have like a little waiting area they were already done they were already calling us up and the the sorbet tea was really nice and interesting it was pretty much just a take on like lemon tea but they put the lemon in a sorbet form and as it melted it integrated with the tea it was a really nice concept it had a lot of plants as well but it was just a bit too cluttered for my liking it could also be because there were just a lot of people in there and on the way back i spotted a cat climbing up a tree for no reason i don't know maybe it was trying to get to the roof probably get to the roof and my bag was also open while we were walking through that crowd and neither i nor my sister noticed but luckily some very helpful and kind bystanders pointed it out to me Otherwise, I pretty much would have lost my phone and my wallet. So that was that was a close call. I've had several close calls. <laughs> this next one, which I think was the ninth one, is kind of the most bare bones out of all the cafes we went to. Pretty much every cafe we went to has such a strong identity it had like a punch and like it was just so unique you know there was always something memorable about each one but this one la Brise, i thought it was just they really could have done more um they were trying to emulate this i think like santorini aesthetic but i don't know if that really works in bandung because of the aesthetic you had to go with kind of like this uh, minimalist with no plants there was only one tree and i think that might have factored into my opinion as well and they had a very small pool that i don't know if you could even swim in and also they were like oh you can't do like photography in here because we'll charge you
like you have to pay if you want to record here with a camera so I had to use my phone and that just kind of like made me sad a little bit but they did have live music which was nice and their menu items looked really good it was seafood so of course I'm gonna like it I ordered this garlic butter scallops and they were a bit overcooked but they were very nice I, I enjoyed it because they were small bite-sized things I knew it wasn't gonna be a lot even though it did cost a lot for a local <laughs> probably would be a steal for foreigners but it was a lot for me and I was glad that the portion size wasn't too bad they gave you 10 scallops that's a lot but each scallop was like one bite so that was great and I also sang with the live band <laughs> because there was no one there so if i messed up no one will be the wiser except for you guys i guess because <laughs> i'm posting it in this vlog finally we arrive at the last cafe which was unplanned because we were supposed to go to colada cafe which is like a cafe that also serves Mexican food, which is very rare in Bandung. It's very difficult to find Mexican food. So, <laughs> I'll be honest, I was really excited to go because I was like, oh, we're definitely gonna try out the food. But at that point, my stomach was going to explode. I was going to die from my stomach bursting. So, we chose not to do that. And luckily, there was this kind of like, storefront area shop corner that just opened near where my house is so we could go there on the way home and it was built by the city's mayor Ridwan Kamil and there was a coffee shop there and he owns the coffee shop so technically it's still locally owned and we just went there our ability huh? Huh? what is that oh. disability that's cool it was called Jabarano coffee. West Java was the region where the earliest coffee plantations were established by the VOC. Thank you, Nether. Uh, honestly, my least favorite experience. It was super crowded. The space was super small, which made sense. It was a weekend and there were a lot of Jakardans there. Uh, and the staff were super swamped. And I did have to wait in line for quite a long time. I placed my order sat down and then waited a long time for my order to come and i think at some point they even forgot that i ordered because they delivered my drink and was like okay we're done now even though i also ordered like a seeds bun for my mom because she likes seed buns and i actually had to go up to the counter and be like uh do you, you guys know that i i'm still waiting for this and to be fair they were very apologetic and very polite but just not a great experience, honestly. Maybe on a less busy day, it'd be pretty good, but uh, otherwise. I will say their drink was very good though. It was easily one of the best drinks I've had all day. And that says a lot because I've been to a lot of cafes that day. I ordered the mixed berry cream milk. And I was expecting just like a stock standard like sickeningly creamy drink it was actually really nice and fruity and not too sweet or too creamy so it was it was excellent honestly kind of it was worth it i would come back there i think just for that drink and my mom also said the seed spun was very good so and with that i crossed the final cafe off my list and i was finished with my self-imposed challenge it really was a struggle to do all 10 cafes in one day, but I had done it. Was it worth it? I would say so, but I think my sister would probably have a different opinion. However, I know that I would remember this for the rest of my life, and I'm really glad to have this video to look back on to commemorate the day I hit 100,000 subscribers. So yeah. It is getting dark. 
But thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. And let me know if you like this style of content where I vlog and try things I've never done before. Or things I have done before, but I've just never shown on camera. Just, you know, let me know. <laughs> Should I do more of these? I, I, I Actually, I'm going to do more of these anyway. Because I do what I want. But, I will say <laughs> thank you so much for subscribing and being a subscriber and supporting me for all this time and always leaving such nice comments and giving me all your support because it really does mean it means a lot <laughs> yeah subscribe and you know keep up to date with my videos if you want to chat with me Go join my Discord, the link is in the description. And if you want exclusive content, you can join my Patreon. And if you want more of like my artsy storytelling stuff, then I have a lot of playlists. But specifically, please check out my Wild Word series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. And I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!